I'm including this as a bonus because Adobe made a decision in CS4 and that was to take out a command that actually had some merit. It was worth trying and it was called the extract filter. So if you have installed CS4 the normal way, you would look under the filter menu and you would not see the word extract there. I have put it back in for the purpose of demonstration. So first of all, how do you put it back in? Well, if you're an owner of a previous version of Photoshop, such as CS3, then here's how you do it. You would go back to your Photoshop CS3 applications folder to plugins and then filters and you'll see in there the filters called extract plus dot plugins. You'd have to copy that out of there and then go to your CS4 folder and do the same thing. Put it in plugins and filters. And that's where I put it in. Then you have to restart Photoshop. Now, if you're not currently, this is your first version of Photoshop, then I'm not sure what to tell you because at the time of me recording these movies, it wasn't exactly clear where Adobe was going to put it. They did say they'd make it available for download. So part of the reason they took it out is because they think the Refine Edge and the Refine Mass technology is leading us in a better direction. And I would tend to agree. Having said that, I still like Extract to try things because sometimes it can do a pretty good job. So if you choose, and I'm not necessarily recommending you should go and do this, but if you want to give yourself another uh, way to try and make a selection after you've installed it, after you've restarted, this is how I use Extract. Duplicate the background layer. If you don't duplicate the background layer before using Extract, you'll end up with pixels that are just gone because it'll make everything else transparent. So I like to do it this way, duplicate the background layer. then go to extract and you get a whole new interface and it involves using this highlighter tool and what you do is you highlight the areas that you want to retain and what you're going to do with this highlight is anywhere where there's areas that have a greater transition for example her hair here I'm going to use a bigger green highlighter and then get smaller on edges that are fairly clear this. So I'm going to make sure I get most of her hair, but for the rest of it, I can go pretty small. Now you can try this thing called smart highlighting. What it tries to do is kind of become magnetized and make it as small as possible. I've had mixed success with it, but frankly, what I would mostly use Extract for anyway would be, see that's just not helping me, I'm going to turn that off. <laughs> and hold down the option key to just erase that and do it myself. What I was going to say though is I would generally try to use extract mostly for a portion such as the her hair because that's going to be the challenging part once you've done a highlight you got to make sure you go all the way around then you use this paint bucket and fill the rest you end up with weird green highlight with blue fill in the middle then you click OK you see what we got now it's kinda hard to tell so once again let's put a layer below that we'll fill with something and you can see not great, although it's not too bad around parts of her hair, but overall, eh, it's, it's okay. But one of the things I like about Extract is that you can use it to do just a portion. For example, hair is another thing that Extract does fairly well. Now, if you get an extraction like this one that's missing some pieces, like look there, it's missed part of her face completely, here's an interesting little trick. If you duplicate it a couple of times, it starts to fill in. Now, it's going to bring a little too much. But again, this is just an example to show you that it is another possibility. I think the reason, again, that Adobe removed it is because they're moving towards this other technology. But you know what? I, I don't mind having this as an option to try. So let's go back to this one that I... Hey, here's a new photo you haven't seen before. <laughs> I know, I know, but I want to show you in comparison. So let's try Extract in this case. I'm going to use my right bracket key to make this brush fairly big this highlighter because I want to get try and get all the little wispy hairs in here something like this get all this part come along here and probably just paint in there a little bit to try and get that little bit then fill the middle now there's lots of other options I'm just showing you the basics of this because I really do consider it a secondary tool you know that's not bad from a hair perspective let's Put a new layer below once again and fill it this time with white and see how we're doing and then do that same duplicate. You know, it's not bad. It's got some possibilities. In fact, it's 
actually got a little, some of the finer hairs that I didn't get in another way. So personally, I look at extract as another tool. Uh, later on, you'll see an example where I treat the person's hair and their body in two separate pieces. The extract command is another example of a tool that you could use to do a portion of the photo. I tend to agree that we're going to move away from this as the refined mass technology continues to get better, but if you want to have this as an option, it certainly uh, is one that you can put back in again. It just doesn't come built into Photoshop CS4.